So the MATLAB acronym actually means matrix lab. And so MATLAB is really designed around the idea of working with vectors and matrices. So we're going to use these as our primary container for holding data that we're going to manipulate and, uh, and then plot. So let's jump right into an example. We'll plot a quadratic function as an example of how to use an array in MATLAB. So first, let's use CLC and clear all to clear our screen in our command window and to clear all the variables. So before we do a plot, we're going to need some x values. So let's generate some x values by using the linspace command. And linspace gives us a bunch of numbers that are spaced linearly. And we just start off with what's our smallest value that we want, what's our largest value that we want, and how many numbers we want. So we want a decent plot that's not too jagged. So we'll say we want 100 points in our plot. OK. Um, then let's uh, say that we, want to, we wanted to uh, have that be the x. So we better say that that's the x for our plot. So that generates a vector that's called x that has got 100 elements in it that go from negative 50 to 50. And now we're going to generate our y values. And so we said y is going to be the square of x. Now it's tempting, but wrong, to do it this way. Because remember, x is a vector. So if we say y is the square of x, MATLAB thinks that we want to do some kind of vector multiplication here. And that's not what we want. We want to square each individual element of x one by one. So if that's what we want, we have to have a period in here. And if you want to do this element by element math, you're going to need that before every uh, exponent or divide symbol or multiply symbol. And forgetting that little period is one of the most common mistakes students make when they're writing their code in MATLAB. OK, so let's see what we get when we run this code. We can see that we got two vectors, a y vector and an x vector. Um, it's a little bit neater to look at these as um, as column vectors instead of row vectors. And a neat little trick you can do for uh, make, for doing that is to actually uh, put a little uh, apostrophe here. If you do that, that changes that from a column vector to a row vector, which is obviously a lot easier to look at. OK, so we've got our original numbers that go from uh, negative 50 to 50, and then we've got the square of those numbers. Great. Before we plot, I just want to show you a couple more things that are useful. One is to use the uh, command to pull out various parts of a vector. So for instance, if I say uh, x n, it gives me the last vector, the last value in the x vector. Or if I said x and then I pick out some address, it will give me the third value of the x vector. So for instance, if I run that code, you can see that the last number in, in the x vector is 50, and the third number in x is negative 47, because we started at negative at, uh, 50. OK, so you can pull out various elements of a vector or a matrix using addresses like that. OK, let's go ahead and make the plot. So we just need to say we want to plot, and we want to say what we want to plot. So our x and our y, which we just they don't have any special names, so we just call them x and y. And then you want to put in sort of some specifications in your line. And the simplest one is just to say whether you want to have a line graph or a, uh, a circle graph. So we're, we're going to put in little O's here, which means that we want circles plotted as the symbol for our plot. And if you look in the help files, there's all sorts of different symbols you can use and different colors you can use. And all those are options that you can use in the plot command. OK. And the last one I like to put in is this show graph. And this means that every time we run the code, we don't have to go digging through windows to find our plot. It will pop that to the top. OK, so we look at that. Indeed, it does look like the graph of a quadratic function. Now, we may want to label the axes on our graph. So we can do that with the xlabel command. So we need to have some sort of text. So we could have uh, time as maybe as our x variable, and perhaps our y label. OK, so let's run this again. And oops, this should be the last thing in our code. 
the last thing we want to do is actually show the graph. Okay. So now we've got some axes on our graph.